good morning all uh, so today uh, we are going to discuss uh, on black box testing right so till now we discussed about white box testing and uh, we also discussed about few types of uh, white box testings right uh, like say basis box testing and control structure testing right we discussed that and now we are going to discuss about the black box testing right? so in this black box testing right what we are going to discuss that we are going to discuss what is a black box testing and what are the uh, 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 when uh, which situation we will be using that black black box testing and then we will be discussing about um, what are the different types of testings right uh, what is, i mean the different types of uh, black box testing right so there are four types of um, uh, black box testing right what are those <coughs> graph based testing methods equivalence partitioning uh, boundary value analysis orthogonal array testing right so today we will try to complete the first three um, uh, testing methods of black box right and then uh, tomorrow uh, we will be discussing about orthogonal uh, array testing right so what do you mean by a first black box testing let us recall what is a white box testing white box testing means what we will be <coughs> testing uh, uh, we will be looking into or in depth of a particular uh, 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 particular mo module right uh, based on the loops and based on uh, the structures right so we will be uh, testing in in depth of it right that is why it is called as black, white box testing but in case of black box testing right we won't be worrying about what is happening inside <coughs> what is the logical uh, logical uh, uh, Part which is what is happening in the uh, module that we won't be testing it. We will be testing only the functional functional part of the uh, product or module. Functional means what? Whether that particular uh, module is working as per the functional requirements. If we give the input, we have to get the output. That is what the functional test, right? Right. So uh, we'll be giving an input and we'll be getting an output, right? And then we'll compare the output with the functional requirements. If, if both are same, then the testing is passed. <coughs> the testing is successfully cleared or passed. Okay. Fine. So what do you mean by black box testing? It is also called as behavioral testing or functional testing. Right? How, how it behaves, whether the behavior is correct or not. Right? That is what we are testing. That is what behavioral testing are or uh, functional testing. <coughs> right? So black box testing attempts to find errors in the following categories, right? Uh, it, it normally focuses on uh, these, uh, uh, I mean, finding these errors. What are, what are the errors? Uh, incorrect or missing functions. See, the functional requirements, that's what we discussed, right? So if the if it doesn't, if the output doesn't meets, meets the functional requirements, means it is an incorrect function. Sometimes you may have missed that function, right? So then it is then it's going to be a missing function, right? That is called as incorrect or missing function. So black box testing attempts to find errors, right? What kind of errors? Incorrect functions, missing functions. Right? What about the next one? Interface errors, right? And then errors in data structure and external or external database access. Behavior or performance errors, right? Initialization and termination errors. So such kind of errors if we can able to identify it, right? Fine. So five categories. If you can divide the uh, black box testing attempts to five categories of finding the errors. This, these are the um, categories, right? The next is tests are designed to answer the following question. First thing is how is functional validity tested, right? How is functional validity tested? So what is the functional validity of the particular test? The second is how are system behavior and performance tested? What class of in input will make good test cases? Right? Is the system practically sensitive to certain input values? Right? So how are the boundaries of the data class are isolated? So let us discuss with the help of an example. Right? When we are discussing the types, we'll discuss all those things and we'll come back to this particular points. Right? Once we discussed all the four types of black box system, right? We'll come back to this point and then we'll discuss one by one. So that we can able to understand it very clearly, right? Fine. 
the first method is graph based testing methods so what do you mean by graph based testing methods software testing begins with creating a graph of important objects and their relationships so what actually we are going to do is that you will be creating a graph as a first step in in the, in the black box testing as a first step you will be creating a graph what do you mean by graph graph consisting of nodes and directive lines right nodes and directive lines like this right fine so what you are doing is that as a first step you are creating a graph right and then you are devising a series of tests that will cover the graph so that each object and relationship is exercised and errors are uncovered so what you are doing is that you are going to create a graph of it and for that graph what you will be doing you will be uh, creating the uh, what is that nodes and directions let me let me show you with the help of an uh, example so that you will be you know, further more uh, clear about what is that let us open let, let me open a jamboard fine so uh, when you are actually uh, going for the black box testing what is the first step you have to do is that so you are going to uh, convert your whole project uh, or whole uh, say uh, design into graphs like say so this is uh, like, like this you will be doing this right so this is you can call it as a nodes right nodes right? and then you will be giving the direction of it right direction of it for example so this is node 1 right this is node 1 this is node 2 right and this is node 3 and this is node 4 okay so this is actually a single direction unidirection this is bi direction right this is multi direction right this is multi direction right so like this you will be creating see this is one model this is another model this is another model this is another model that is why n1 n2 n3 n4 are nodes right and what is the relationship between n1 and n2 it is <coughs> uni direction right what is the relationship between n2 and n4 it is bi direction what is the relationship between n4 and n3 Right, it is going to be uh, uh, what is that? Uh, multi direction or multi direction in sense, uh, multiple links, multiple links with a single direction, right? Multiple links, fine. So, if you are doing like this, then you can able to test when you are uh, uh, testing the node one, right? You'll be getting an output when you're testing node two, you'll be getting an output, right? So, whether the relationship working or not, that you can check it out, right? The output of n1 is given as an input to n2. Right, so that is a relation, relation, right? So when you are giving, when you are testing n2, n2 will be producing an output, right? And that is given as an input. And for n4, if you are, uh, uh, what is that? If you are uh, uh, testing it, you will be getting an output of this n4. That will be given as an input to n2. So you will be checking all these things, right? So if you are creating a graph, then you will be able to uh, uncover the basic relationship errors, whether the relationship is successfully created or not. Such a kind of errors you can able to identify it, right? I think you can able to understand it. So now let us see an example of it, right? So here, as I told, object one, object two, object three, all are nodes, right? All are nodes. Object one, object two, object three, all are nodes. Right? This is directed link. This is a link weight. Okay, you'll be giving a link weight weightage. Okay, that link. And then uh, uh, this is a uh, Unidirection, right? That means it is it is from uh, object one to object two, and this is actually parallel link. So it means that you have multiple links between object two and object three. Likewise, undirected link. So it means that there is no direction, but there is a link between object one and object two. So they are ex explaining this example with the help of Word file. You have Microsoft Word document, right? With the help of that, they are actually uh, explaining this particular graph based testing method right what, what actually they are explaining is that <clears throat> so three nodes they have created the first node is new file menu select right so in in your word file right you'll be you can able to see new file when you click that new file what happens you will be getting a new document window so document window will be opening so when you click this this is opening right so uh, 
you'll be selecting that corresponding menu and then you will be you will be getting a new document window right this is one relationship between that right fine the second thing is in document window what you'll be having you'll be having multiple attributes what are those multiple attributes say for example back background color is white text color is say default color or preferences and smart dimensions default setting or preferences so you can convert it to two columns one columns you can add tables so many attributes are there so when you are using this particular document window when you are clicking this document window multiple functions or multiple uh, happenings will be there right that is why it is shown as multiple lines right multiple lines right two lines are there right so this document window contains these things what are the what are those things it is in white color it can be uh, it can be a, a text color of black or it can be text color of say blue whatever it is right and then you can change the preferences you can change the settings of it you can convert the whole page into dual column you can change the uh, what is that um, uh, margin inches margin size so uh, all those things can be done right that is why it is multi line and then here there is no direction right new file menu select and then you have a document text <coughs> so there is no directed lines but there is a link because when you click this new file right you will be also getting this document text you will be also getting this document that is this will be say default thing so so that is why no uh, link is there i mean no uh, direction is there but there is a link between these two documents i mean two two nodes right so this is what your um, graph based testing method convert your object or modules into nodes and what is the relationship between the nodes right that you will be uh, uh, drawing it and checking that whether this particular um, uh, node is generating this particular node that we are actually checking it, right this is what is called as graph graph based testing methods and this is the initial setup initial step of a graph based testing methods okay normally in, in any any project right first you will test this whether the high level uh, functionalities are working or not that much the next is actually the types of uh, uh, graph based testing methods the first thing is transaction flow modeling right what is the transaction flow modeling the nodes represent steps in some uh, transaction so so i have i i have mentioned four types transaction flow modeling finite state modeling data flow modeling and timing modeling in all the four modelings what are the nodes and what are the links that is what i am going to going to say or going to explain okay so in transaction flow modeling what are the nodes node in the sense it is the transaction represents the nodes the link represents the logical connection between the steps so the example is example they have given is that um, an airline reservation system right using an online service so what what actually you'll be doing right so in this case um, uh, you'll be you'll be having a object or a module say um, uh, selecting the seats right selecting the seat once the seats are selected right you have to go to the payment window this is an example right so uh what is the link between uh, selecting the seats and payment window so it means that uh once you selected the seat automatically it has to go to the next window what is that payment window right so this is the link between these two things okay so the node represents the some transaction and uh, the uh, link represents the logical connections between the steps once you have selected the seats seats you have to pay the amount so payment window should be going right this is what your transaction flow model right in finite state modeling what you will be doing right so uh, say uh, in in a user interface take a user interface so in that nodes represents um, a user observable states right and the link represents transition that occur to move from one state to another state say for example uh, we can take the same example of your uh, word document right so each of the screen that appears as an order entry clerk that takes a phone order okay let, let, let us take a simple example instead of taking this example right let us take a simple example right so this is one window right this is one the main window right fine when you click the new file menu selected it is going to another window that is the document window is it right 
So the node represents different user of it. So how the user is looking. When he clicks a particular uh, button, right, it is going to another window, right? So this is window one and window two. And the user clicks, it is going from window one to window two. That is what the finite state modeling. The node rep represents user observable states, right? And the link represents the transition that occurred to move from one state to another. That is what your finite state modeling. Then the third one is data flow modeling. Very easy. Here, the node represents the data objects, and the link represents what? The transformation that occurs to translate one data object to another data object. Say, for example, you have um, you have a node that is, uh, at, uh, say, for example, a node that is uh, GW, that is uh, gross wages. Let me, let me show you with the help of an example. Right? So let us have a, say, um, around here, right? And then. Fine. So what you are having is that you are having uh, two nodes, right? Two nodes. Let me make it as big. Two nodes, right? And what you are having here is that uh, gross wages. So gross wages. This is what you are having is the gross wages. Edit text. Gross wages, right? Fine. And here what you are having is that tax withheld, let us say FICA tax withheld, it is FTW, right, FICA tax withheld, some tax is there, okay. Right. Okay, FTW, right. So how I am giving the link between these two uh, uh, nodes, gross wages to FTW, right. So what is the gross wage, for example, the gross wages, say in the same example, what I have given is that. So five uh, into 0.62, okay, is equal to three, for example, right? So uh, five is your gross wages. So for example, five is your uh, gross wages. Let me let me show it here. Five is your uh, gross wages, right? And what is FTW? What is the tax? So tax is say 0.62, right? 0.62. 62 percentage, for example. Okay, the 62 percentage is the uh, FTW, right? That is the. So how actually you are? So you have, you should not put uh, 62 percentage means what? 0.62, right? You should not put like this. This is the wrong thing. But what actually it is that you are actually calculating this one. What is that? 0.62 into five into five, and you are getting what? Three here, is it right? Three here, right? FTW is actually three here. So, gross wages is five and FTW is three. How this is actually happened because of this particular calculation, right? So, how this node transferred or transmit from one node to another node based on this particular calculation, right? So, that is why it is mentioned here. Uh, nodes are data objects in data flow modeling. The nodes are data objects and the links are transformations what transformation this is what the transformation this is what the transformation right so the links are transformation that occur to translate one data object to another that is called as data flow modeling right the next one is timing modeling very simple the nodes are the programmable objects and the links are sequential connection between those objects and each sequence of connections will be having its own weights that weights will be having the times Right, very simple. Right, say for example, this is node one. Let me let me remove all these things. This is node one. This is node two. Node two. Right. Let me remove all these things. This is node two. Now, what you're having is that you'll be having, um, you'll be having the timings of it. That is, say for example, say five seconds. This is going to be the weightage. Right. Right, when you are having a nodes n1 and n2, how it is uh, trans uh, say uh, transferred or say, um, uh, what do you say? Uh, that is uh, this uh, the connections between those objects. So, what is the connection with this? So, this is the transition timing, right? So, five seconds, 
so if you want to transmit from one node to another node it is taking care as 5 seconds so the node transition time is 5 seconds so this is what we call as timing node the timing model right the nodes are program the nodes are program objects the links are sequential connection between those objects based on the weights what is the weights here time time is the weight here right fine so these are the types of uh, uh, graph based testing methods so as a initial step as a start right you will be doing all these things you will be doing any of these things for example right creating the nodes finding the relationship between those nodes